Hi, I'm Wow. Before we dive into the nitty gritty of the things that you need to know before starting to do a full body model rigging, I will have to let you know that just in case you're going to make a model of your own, please make sure that for PSD preparation, the color mode must be in RGB, the PSD must not contain layer masks, Live 2D Cubism can't translate and import the files with layer mask properly. As of now, in version 5.203, the only blend modes that can be imported are multiply and additive. Avoid using blend modes other than that. More blend modes can be imported in version 5.3, however, it is not compatible with Video Studio yet, so we can only wait for the new update. Using version 5.3 can cause the model to break on VTube Studio. On the left hand side, you will find the part palette and below it is the deformer palette. Next to the deformer palette is the parameter palette where you will find your parameters. Please always name your layers properly. Only use underscores, numbers, and alphabets. These characters can be imported directly into Live 2D. Special characters, for example, these are not recommended if you want to speed up your process in prepping your model in Live 2D. Make sure to draw the mouth line in a straight line so it's easier to shape during rigging. Your right hand refers to the left side of the model while your left hand refers to the right side of the model. Now that we have the general things out of the way, we can start with our first point. Vertex and vertices. These little gray dots are known as vertices. One dot equals to a vertex. The more vertices the art part has, the smoother the mesh will be. However, if you set it to too many vertices, your PC might explode, trust me guys, and lag a lot because of too many triangles. So try to avoid using too many, but enough vertices needed for your rigging. Mesh. There are two ways to make a mesh. Automatic meshing, and manual meshing. For automatic meshing, this icon right here is an automatic mesh generator. You can press it or press Ctrl Shift A for the auto mesh window. There are a few presets given by the program itself and you can make your own preset here. This is my setting for my personal auto mesh preset. Manual meshing. This icon right here is the manual mesh editor. You can press it or press Ctrl E to be brought to the manual mesh editor. Here you can make your own mesh using the tools provided. In this series, we will be using the add point tool, the eraser, the lasso tool, and the stroke mesh mapping tool. A little note, always make sure that the vertices are connected. Having blue lines inside the mesh is an indication that your vertices are fully connected. If the mesh vertices are not connected, it will result in mesh being broken. Clipping. If you want the blue cube to be only inside the red cube, you will have to clip them together. To do that, you will have to select the red cube and press Ctrl C to copy the part ID. Go to blue cube and look into the inspector palette. Locate the clipping ID and press Ctrl V. Press enter. Now you have successfully clipped the blue cube to the red cube. To invert your clipping, you press the reverse mask checkboard and check mark it. If you're having trouble with clipping the layers for the eyes like this, the solution will be double clipping the parts together. This is how you do it in Live 2D Cubism. Bring the blue cube above the red cube and the green cube in the parts palette. Ctrl C the red cube and paste it to the blue cube's clipping ID. Make sure to invert it. Then Ctrl C the blue cube and paste it to the red cube and green cube clipping ID. Now the red cube and the green cube are inside the blue cube, while the green cube is inside the red cube. Deformers. There are two types of deformers. Warp deformers and rotation deformers. To get warp deformers, you go to this icon. Warp deformers are colored green. It has warp division, which are the gray dots, and the bezier division, which are the green dots. Moving the gray dots equals a smaller change to the mesh shape, while moving the green dots equals a bigger change to the mesh shape. 
most of the time you will use warp deformers for most of the rigging so please make sure to be familiar with how to use the warp deformer you will use warp deformer for head angles eyes body angles hair and more to get rotation deformers you go to this icon rotation deformers look like a compass and are colored red you can drag the tip and hold alt to change the length of the needle Hold control to relocate the pivot. To rotate, all you have to do is drag the tip around. Deformer hierarchy. In the deformer hierarchy, there are two things that you need to know. Parent deformers and child deformers. Parent deformers are the top deformers. Child deformers are deformers that are inside another deformer. To put it simply, A is the parent of B and C while B is a child of A and C is a child of B. A affects anything that is inside it. B affects anything that is inside of it but is not unable to affect A because A is the parent of B. C is affected by both A and B because both A and B are the parents of C. Both warp and rotation deformers have different effects on each other. A parent warp deformer can affect a child warp deformer. A parent warp deformer cannot affect a child rotation deformer. A parent rotation deformer can affect a child warp deformer. A parent rotation deformer can affect a child rotation deformer. Brushes. There are two types of brushes in Life 2D. Brush Selection Tool B and Brush Deform Tool. You use the Brush Selection Tool to select a specific part of the warp deformers or meshes. For Brush Deform Tool, you can use it to deform the shape of the mesh on the warp deformer. Deform Path Edit. For Deform Path Edit, you can press P to activate it. You can only use this directly on meshes. You can make as many dots as you want and drag them around to deform the shape of the mesh. Keyframe These green dots are keyframes. It indicates that it records any movements, changes, or deformations. Here are presets for the keyframe. The first one is two keys, and the second one is three keys. If you need more key, you can add them by pressing here. If you want to delete all, you press here. If you want to delete specific keys, you select the key and go to here. Parameters. There are two types of parameters, normal parameters and blend shape parameters. Normal parameters are used for expressing specific movements. To add a parameter, you go to plus sign at the bottom of the parameter palette. You click that and a window will pop up. Press OK after confirming the settings or range that you want to have. You can synthesize the corners of two parameters combined together by pressing the three bars menu and then here. Make sure that the parameter that you want to synthesize are correct and press OK. The more parameters share the same keyframes, the harder it is to keep the movement working with each other. Blend shape. To make it easier to understand, I go by this sentence. Blend shape doesn't care about your keyframes unless you limit them and put them under certain conditions. To add a blend shape parameter, you go to the plus sign at the bottom of the parameter palette. You click that and a window will pop up. Press OK after confirming the settings or range that you want to have. Make sure to check the checkbox for the blend shape option. You can't synthesize the corners of blend shapes since they already automatically done it for you from the start. So you don't have to make countless deformers to rig the physics. You can even use only one deformer to record a lot of movement. To limit the blend shape movement, you go to three bars menu and press limit settings for blend shape weights. After clicking it, you will see the blend shape limit window. Here you can limit the weight of the blend shape based on the parameter it affects. There are preset graphs for you to play around with 
and you can also manually make your own graph here. Deformation method. In this class, I will need you to set up shortcuts for the deformation method since we will be using it a lot during rigging. To set up the shortcut, you will have to go to File and then Keyboard Shortcuts. Go to the search bar and type Temporary Deform Tool. Go to Free Transform and set it as Y. Go to Temporary Path Deformation and set it as U. Then press OK. Free Transform means you can transform the shape using any red dots here. Temporary Path Deformation works the same as Deform Path Edit but for warp deformers. Skinning. There are two types of skinning, automatic skinning and manual skinning. Automatic skinning, press P or the deform path edit icon and make a line with some dots. Go to modeling and then skinning and then use deformation path for skinning. Wait for a bit for the deformers to generate. Now you have done automatic skinning. Automatic skinning will automatically glue set deformers and parameters for you. Manual skinning. Make as many parameters as you want. For me, I'll make three. I also decide to use blend shape for the parameters. Select the mesh or meshes that you want to do skinning with and then make a warp deformer. Control C on the deformer and press Ctrl V to match the same number of parameters that we made earlier. Drag the deformers into the main deformer to make deformer hierarchy. Drag the mesh inside the most child deformer. Key in the deformation on each parameter separately. Set the parameters for extended interpolation by clicking here for a more circular movement. And now you have done manual skinning. Manual skinning is recommended to use the most because it's a lot smoother and easier to rig, especially for hair physics. Physics. Go to modeling and then physics settings. And then you will be greeted with physics window. Here is the input palette. The pendulum palette and the output palette. To make a physics group, Click add and then name it as anything that you want, but I will name it as skinning. In the input palette, click add and then choose which parameter you want to be the one affecting the output parameters. Make sure that the value is set to more than zero so you can see the effect. Go to the pendulum palette and add your pendulums. Since we have three skinning parameters, I'll make the pendulum numbers 3, 2. Go to Output Palette, click Add, and choose all the parameters that you want our input to affect. Now you can drag the cursor on the canvas to see the physics. If you see that the physics are not strong enough, you press Increase Output. If it's too strong, press Decrease Output. You can play around with these values on Pendulum Palette to fit your taste. Augmentation and Delays Augmented physics is how you make the movement tracking more bouncy or smoother, depending on your taste. A lot of professional riggers use this method to make the movement of, for example, head angles more dynamic and not janky. For example, these. Delays will be used in this class for body angles and hip sways. It adds more details and dynamic to the model movement. To do that, you connect each string of parameters to different physics groups separately. Glue. In order to glue, you will need two meshes that share the same mesh at the certain part of the mesh. First, make sure that the meshes overlap with each other at a certain part. Then, go to the mesh edit mode and add vertices to make each other's mesh. Lasso tool on the part that you want to glue and then press bind. Now you have two meshes glued together. To smoothen the mesh a little bit, you press the glue option and paint it bit by bit. Hold shift to change the gluing mode so you can adjust the strength of the glue until you're happy with the shape. These two tools are to unglue the glues. The yellow one is to reattach the glue together. Texture. 
Control T to toggle the texture window. Here is where you sort each mesh on the canvas to export it to VTube Studio. You can also auto sort them by clicking this button. Now that you have reached the end of the video, you are ready to dive into the next stage of VTuber model rigging. Hopefully, I have explained to you enough about each tool so you're no longer confused about which tools to use for VTuber rigging. I'll see you guys in the next video! Bye-bye!